Well, hello again. Welcome to Vesper Adventures. And um, might be a sad day, really, but uh, hopefully not. I'm going to try and evaluate whether I really should sell one of these three scooters. Um, perhaps it's time to admit that three is probably uh, maybe a crowd, if you like. And um, especially the amount of use they get individually, whether I'd be uh, better off actually moving one of these on at least and um, sticking with uh, just the two scooters but they've each got their merits they've each got their i suppose their downsides as well although not many because they're vespers vespers don't have downsides do they so it's time to maybe take each one out for a little evaluation a, a short test ride and um, i'll take you along and we'll see which is which but we've got the gts 300 here to my left uh, good practical workhorse very very reliable on my right is my pretty trusty gt spanish gt 160 with the 200 cc engine again nice and lovely to ride and pretty reliable and this is the fun one this is the uh, mark 1 px with the uh, 251cc Pinasco engine. Now that's a hell of an engine and it's this is a hell of a toy and it's gonna be hard pushed to decide because there are three of them are so different, which one, if any, have got to go. <laughs> okay, well out on the Moto Vespa GT, as probably seen in other videos of uh, had a PX200E engine in here, so it's uh, decent, reliable, and got a little bit of go in it as well, where the original Spanish 160 engine are a bit dated and slightly underpowered and difficult to get parts for. The standard PX engine literally is a straight fit, plug and play as they say runs like a dream so just going to have a little run on this now and tell you my feelings about this scooter and uh, what it means to me what its practicalities are what its weaknesses are in a way but you know we're straight up to 50-ish 55-ish on a dual carriageway so performs well enough really, smooth enough to ride, saddles lacking a bit of padding but that's purely an aesthetic choice rather than um, a necessity. No indicators, hence the constant head turning which is why I'm not the biggest fan of helmet cams but this one allows me to record as well. The one thing this is lacking in slightly is in the braking department. It's got the standard original drum brakes, no upgrades, apart from it's got decent quality and relatively new brake shoes in, but they are limited in their stopping power. And something I'm very, very conscious of if I'm ever riding this scooter in a group is that I have to remember which scooter I'm on and the fact that I need to get on the brakes maybe a little bit earlier. So just to run down a bit of another bit of dual carriageway here but it's only a 40 limit so can't go mad. Gearbox is lovely. What this scooter means to me, I imported this scooter directly from Spain four years ago? Yeah, I think it was, October 2019, so over four years ago. And um, as a standard engine, bit tatty, still in the same coat of paint when I bought it, but it's had some touching up. I had a um, fully rebuilt P200 engine fitted and um, run it in. I added the decals, some of the tidying, the chose the wheels, tyres and the overall look and the saddle so the overall look even though I've not done a huge amount of customising to it it's I suppose you could say it's my scooter it's got my own touches in and it 
is significantly different scooter to the one I bought. So there's a bit of me in this one, which, you know, what does that mean? That means it's it's got slightly personal personal value, um, not so much um, monetary value, but it's um, yeah, it, it's had a, a bit of input from myself, and there's a bit of sentimentality in there. Now I'm trying to keep sentimentality out of this decision. I know it'll definitely come in somewhere. The other consideration with this scooter is that it's on pretty much standard suspension, uh, standard style suspension anyway. No real upgrades, it's got an adjustable rear shock but it uh, certainly wasn't an expensive one and I replaced the front damper um, to something marginally stronger but nothing that you'd really consider to be modified so certainly doesn't handle fantastically well it doesn't handle like a modern scooter but it, um, it it's it's a decent enough ride you know you have to be careful over oh, <laughs> perfect over potholes but um, in general it's it's not bad it's fairly forgiving because it's standard um, so you get a bit of softness there uh, but you don't get that necessarily sure-footedness that you might do oh, geez, yes than uh, with something that was either more modern or more expensive I suppose is the simple term I mean that could easily be upgraded at any time should I choose to I mean rear shocks particularly are single shock so it's just a swap in swap out messing around with the front end can be a little bit more fiddly a um, bit of a but it's a bit of a pain in the backside job rather than anything that's overly technical you just have to be a bit wary of your knuckles as much as anything and looking at the state of modern roads perhaps if this scooter is, the, is a keeper that's what's going to have to be done so there's the GT 160 pretty basic not brilliant handling, not fantastic brakes, but a lovely characterful scooter. Got a real bit of uh, bit of history to it. Um, I like the style of it. I like the way it rides. Maybe a little bit clunky and basic, but uh, it is. It is a nice little scooter, and being as I've had it for a little while now, I'm quite attached to it too. Particularly, as I said, there's a little bit of my input into how this scooter looks and uh, work I've done into it so does sentimentality come into it shouldn't really but I have a feeling it might do let's see how we get on with the others next up is the Mark 1 PX with the 251 Pinasco engine and what a difference riding these two two strokes back to back this thing's so lively, it's also a little bit skittish on the tyres it's got, but the suspension is absolutely superb. It's got uh, Pinasco front and rear shock absorbers. It's also obviously the more modern layout and design of two-stroke Vespa suspension anyway, which is a marked improvement on the front end handling with the combined damper and shock absorber which means that there's a vast vast amount more available on the aftermarket this has also got a disc brake front end set up and has been very slightly lowered on the front end so it all adds up to a scooter that handles really well now and I just sit on this little bit of dual carriageway I haven't got very far to go the absolute, the power delivery of this engine is just incredible. It really is. I mean, in fourth gear, you can almost ride it like an auto scooter because it's got so much torque. I did have it mildly detuned when I had it dynoed at reed speed, but probably a year ago now. Um, I suppose the truth of that is the fact that I've only done about 500 miles on it since. Uh, but went for a, a drop in overall horsepower 
this engine is about 22, 23 brake horsepower, which is round about double that of the standard PX200 engine. But the difference this gives you as much as anything is the torque. It really, really does make a huge difference. And the modified suspension means it handles superbly well too. So in terms of where this sits, I suppose this is the sports car. It's probably nothing as exotic as a Ferrari, but it certainly comes in with your I'm trying to think what it might be. There's a Mini in front of me, maybe one of the high, more highly tuned Mini Coopers. Mark II Ford Escort, semi rally prepared, something like that. Something that's not necessarily so practical as a day to day rider, but as a bit of a weekend fun ride, something quite special, quite different and it never fails to put a smile on my face when I ride this scooter uh, both the handling and the power delivery another option potentially open to me is selling the engine of this because it's probably a bit more powerful than I ever need and put the that nicely performing 200cc engine from the Spanish chassis, the GT into here and put the old Spanish engine back into the red one and, and sell that and keep this as a nice handling 200cc touring spec scooter one that would enable you to as they say ride uphill and down dale where's he going all day long because the other impracticality of this is that the fuel economy is dreadful. It's got a 30 mil Del Auto car through a reed block and it just encourages you to rev and that obviously just throws fuel into the engine. But wow, when you do open it up, she is lovely and great fun and in my opinion a really nice looking scooter as well um, not my build I did a straight swap for another scooter about 18 months ago for this I was absolutely delighted with what I ended up it needed a little bit of tweaking but this is exactly near enough anyway the same spec as the scooter that I uh, the scooter that I bought so it's got none of me in it really None of my input or design, <laughs> I put a lot of input or design, but nothing that I've put added to it to personalise it really. Possibly because it's pretty much damn perfect as it is. And doesn't really need any enhancement. Having the engine dyno was a really good move made it so much more rideable and a bit more economical too but I'm still feeling that we're only literally somewhere between maybe 50 and 60 miles to a tank full of juice which reality is not we're not talking about the money aspect here but the practicality of uh, how often you need to refuel if you were uh, to ride it longer distances I think I'd trust the rideability and reliability to take on further longer journeys rather than just buzzing around town and country lanes which is all I've used it for realistically but you just have to carry extra fuel with you and be prepared to stop at virtually every opportunity and top it up which with a two-stroke pre-mix scooter can be a little bit of a ball ache having to measure your oil every time if you stop for the you know, maybe two or three litres just because you don't know where the next fuel station is going to be but all told it's a cracking scooter to ride I'm glad I've got it I'm glad I did the deal and took ownership of it when I did and I've had fantastic fun 
riding this around it even handles the uh, potholes a bit better especially when I'm not looking out for them I think it's fair to say that I get an awful lot of pleasure out of riding this scooter. It handles superbly, the engine performs wonderfully, it pulls me, let's be fair, I'm not tiny, pulls me well uphill and you can leave it in fourth gear and it's got the torque to pull. Has a lot of impracticalities, the, the tune of the engine uh, presumably is going to need to be keeping on top of more regularly than it would be on a standard engine and fuel economy it's not really got the best fuel economy for longer rides so is this one the keeper or is this the one for sale well i've still got to make that decision yet but i really really do need to bear in mind just how much i love riding it and just what a smile this scooter puts on my face whenever i get the chance to uh, get out and have a little spin onto the gts 2021 75th anniversary model GTS 300 IE Supertech to give its full description. First thoughts, just as you wheel this out of the garage, open up the seat, drop my camera bag straight under the seat, plenty of room for it, jump on, press the starter and away you go simplicity itself and that's part of it with these scooters is they've taken the pain I suppose in, in, in all respects probably for some people nowadays out of riding little old style old school two-stroke scooters and made scootering a lot more accessible and a lot more easy I suppose to more people um, as you get older you tend to lose grip strength changing gears and using the clutch using your left wrist does take its toll and this takes it all away from you fully automatic constant velocity transmission smooth reliable powerful as well four stroke engine um, off the top of my head I think these are about 32 brake horse something along those lines Ooh, spot of rain too and so you know people spend an awful lot of money tuning a two stroke to get the performance that you can get for probably literally particularly on the second hand market half to a third of the price I mean GTS's you can pick one up for a couple of grand you have to be careful of the rust underneath and particularly in the British climate they, they the newer ones are more prone to it than older models but they are literally just so practical the other thing is is they're physically bigger as well um, heavier obviously because it's got a liquid called four-stroke engine so this comes in about 150 kilos where the two strokes are sort of 95 kilos so it is something that's worth bearing in mind choosing between the two especially for round town riding but just the comfort the practicality the GTS literally ticks all of the boxes that you'd ever really want in most two wheelers it, it probably lacks a little bit of top end power compared to larger motorbikes and a bit of top end speed when we ride them on the motorways which isn't very often we have a tendency to stick at 65 to 70 which is where their comfort zone is really and in practical aspects what you could really do with is maybe 10 to 15 miles an hour more just to give you that little bit of extra in hand for the motorway riding just to get you out of trouble if you're struggling with uh, a bit of traffic and faster moving vehicles
How do you sum up the GTS? It's a difficult one to do. They're so practical, so reliable, but do they lack a bit of soul, a bit of personality, a little bit of indi individuality? There's an awful lot of them about. They're all exactly the same underneath, whatever people might or might not do to them aesthetically, which most people don't. A lot of people add a little bit of their own personalization, but perhaps that's because they're just so damn good to start with, so practical. And does practical mean that you make a decision which one to sell with your head or with your heart? If it was with your head, you would definitely never sell a GTS in favor of a two stroke. This thing took me nearly 3000 miles last summer all over the Alps, never missed a beat. Check the oil, put fuel in and away you go. Every single day, carried luggage, uphill, over mountain passes, you name it didn't miss a beat and uh, the heat the previous summer in uh, Portugal and Spain no problems whatsoever uh, the one day we rode it was close on 40 degrees all day long the fan was running hard yeah but had no effect at all on the overall performance of the scooter <laughs> rider was a different matter but you know comfortable you can sit on one of these do 250 300 miles a day without much thought so where do we go from here? Would it be the Red GT? Simple little scooter, very basic, a bit harsher to ride, but that's got real character for me. Would it be the absolute grin factor of the PX? The thing that every time I take that out, it makes me smile, like I said earlier. Or the solidity of the GTS, is that the one that you think, well, I can always replace a GTS, I can always get another one. Uh, any day, you can pick a second-hand one up or even a new one if uh, you're feeling a bit more flush, but GTSs are, you know, there's plenty in the marketplace and they are, I suppose, replaceable. But I, I can't envisage my garage without having a GTS in it, purely for, like, just setting out today hitting the starter and away you go. The carrying capacity, the comfort, the ease of riding, the not having to think about will it start, won't it start, have I got enough two-stroke oil with me, how far can I go, does the speedo work accurately enough so I can measure the distance because it doesn't have a fuel gauge. I think the GTS is definitely a keeper. So, which of the two-strokes? I don't really need two two-strokes on 10-inch wheels. They're both lovely scooters and they both really do have their strengths and weaknesses. The strength is obviously the PX with its powerful engine and it looks lovely and it's a great ride. It's not that practical a scooter to own. And um, the weakness of the uh, clunky handling and old school design of the Spanish GT. Now that could always be upgraded, so if that was a keeper, perhaps I'd look at upgrading the suspension and brakes on that one at some point. But that's a solid little reliable scooter too. So I think this time I'm gonna let my head rule the heart. And if I'm gonna sell one, it's gonna to have to be the PX unfortunately. And boy, am I gonna miss that scooter if I go through with this decision. But the fact that I've done 600 miles on it since I've had it, I think that tells it well enough really, is that it's a luxury. And is it a luxury I can afford? Well, I possibly can afford to keep it. It doesn't owe me anything as such, but that could be money in the bank as well. So probably, probably the one that's gonna go will be the PX. And that would be a sad, tough decision to make, but you know, when you set out to make a decision like this, you know it's going to be hard because there are attachments to all three of them. So that'll do. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a little bit different. Tried a few different camera angles as well. So if it's your first time, please subscribe and give us a like. Please add comments as normal, as all YouTubers ask and hopefully we'll see you out and about very soon we're into spring you can hear the birds singing and all being well the roads are going to dry up and uh, we can get out and enjoy riding the scooters again until then bye bye